Hey everybody, Adam Bartoreskin here, South Bay Sports Training, Trotsky and Cali Baseball, here with uh, some former players and current coaches of ours. Um, Going to get a chance to, to go through some questions with them, talk about their experience with, with Cali and Trotsky Baseball and kind of growing up in our facility. Um, same time, uh, get a chance to kind of hear, hear what's going on here at South Bay and something we're going to try to do on a regular basis with, uh, with some college coaches. Uh, some former players of ours um, and, and some of our current coaches in our program. So uh, first things first, I was just going to introduce uh, Stevie Berman. Uh, Stevie's someone that, that we've known since he was about 12 or 13 years old, uh, played for us uh, in the Cali baseball program, uh, played for us uh, while a lot of our coaches were coaching at Saratoga High School, uh, from Santa Clara University, played there for three years uh, before getting drafted in 2016 with uh, the 31st round by the Dodgers. Um, what's up, Steve? How's it going? Good. Just chilling over here. It's a little different on the quarantine season, but everything's good over here. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then uh, at the bottom of our screen, I got uh, I got Mitch White. Uh, came in uh, probably just about a year or so after uh, Stevie started playing with us. I think you were about 14, uh, 14 years old when you started. Am I right with that? Yeah, that sounds about right. Right. Mitch went to uh, Bellarmine College Prep, uh, also went to Santa Clara University with Stevie. Uh, he was drafted the same year as, as Steve, 2016, in the, in the second round by the Dodgers. So uh, one reason we wanted both these guys on is to kind of hear their path. Obviously, they spent quite a bit of time together in, in uh, college and professional baseball. So uh, excited to have you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, Coach, T uh, Coach Tommy. Coach Tommy's here. He's going to uh, help facilitate this a little bit. You know, he'll help keep it light um, and, we, and ask all the all the good questions. Probably get all the dirt out of these guys. What's up, Tom? What's going on, guys? How's it going? Are both you guys back home, Steve, Mitch? Yeah. Oh yeah. I got Mitch. home. I've been home Mitch. for like a month. I think Mitch got home last week for a week, maybe. Okay. Yeah, like a week and a half, two weeks. I was coming in from Arizona. Nice. Nice. Then we got Coach Tony right there. That's that's Coach Tony's dog. Uh, Tony, which uh, which club is that? Oh, that's the uh, that's the male. Scooter. Thank you. Scoot right. dog. You just Scooter. Call him male. Yeah. Uh, he came. You know, well, I have a male and a female, and uh, he <laughs> he came with his name though. I have to just explain that that he came with the name already. So. All right. All right. <laughs> So, hey, Steve, starting with you, um, we want to talk about basically, because a lot of the guys that are going to see this video um, were guys that uh, around the same age that, that you were when you started with us. Can you, like, give us a, a quick rundown of your, of your Cali experience and your, and your Trotsky experience? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think when you get into a travel ball or, like, a team, this kind of team, like, nowadays it's so competitive and you need to get in one of these teams. And I think with me for my – like with Cali or Trotsky, um, for me and my dad, it was all about, like, the trust factor. Like, who am I going to get into this program and trust? Like, these coaches, they need to know their stuff. I need to be able to trust them. They need to be able to trust me. And, like, for us, that was big in it. And it was very competitive. It was um, – I still have a lot of lifelong friends from that I played with, like Mitch or a lot of the guys, Sam Dell playing Calmini that we talked about. And um, for us, that was huge. Awesome. Awesome. And that was one thing for you. I know you, you basically started early and, and stayed in the program. Um, what year actually you committed to Santa Clara? What year did you commit? Uh, I think it was before my junior year of high school. So 2000, I graduated in 13, so 11, 2011. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Those are some pretty good teams you guys played on back then too, right? You start looking back yeah. at some of the old names and some of the old players. Mm hmm for sure. You know, Mitch, uh, for you, when you started with us, I mean, that team had kind of had, you know, Stevie had been on it for a couple of years. Sam had been on it for a couple of years. What was it like for you joining the program and being a part of a team like that? It was awesome. I mean, there was kind of – it felt like there was two groups a little bit, like the older guys who'd been around for a while, the guys like Stevie. Um, and then there's like a new group that kind of meshed in with that, um, myself included. And then there's a couple of Bellarmine guys coming in, like Dylan Steele or uh, Justin Calamani. Those guys came in later with me. Um, but it was cool. I mean, just going to all these tournaments, there's all these teams out there, and it was just fun at the end of the day. That was the best part. 
What? Uh, so you're an early commit guy too, right? What year did you commit? Was that? I was after Steve or before? After for sure. I don't remember. We were at a rest- We were at a restaurant together. After a when tournament, I it was like a yeah, it was oh, a pizza it, restaurant. It and Rebus called Reba, Gabe Rebus called him, and I was like, "Oh, here we go!" Like everyone was at a table, I'm like, "Uh oh." And you, I think you committed there. Really? Is that how it happened? I don't remember honestly. I Pretty trust sure. you, but yeah, I mean, we were he, convincing he you. We were convincing him. I needed a good roommate. <laughs> yeah, right. And he needed a good catcher. It was perfect. Oh, it yeah. worked out well. It did. Oh, yeah. And then, so, Steve, uh, you, four years, Saratoga High School, I think three of them were with us. Um, I mean, shoot, yeah. no one has a, a perfect ride through this thing. That's one thing I was kind of thinking about with both of you guys. You guys both at some point, you know, had to battle some sort of adversity. I know for you, Steve, before we even got to Saratoga, your freshman year, you got injured playing basketball. I don't think you played your freshman year of high school. Um, mm-hmm. And then your sophomore year is when myself, Coach, Coach Tony, Coach Michael Will, uh, took over that program and you had to deal with us for three years. What was that like? Uh, it was bittersweet. I mean, obviously, I knew you before, so I knew you were going to be easy on us. And uh, I think it was a good turnaround for the program, though, just because we needed something to kick us in the butt a little bit. And it was uh, it was definitely fun. We still talk. I still talk with my high school friends about those memories and when you guys came in and how <laughs> how much more we ran, how much more serious it was when you guys got there. And we started competing, though. And at the end of the day, that's what it was all about was competing, winning, and getting to CCS and making a run. What about you, Mitch? Tell us about your, your Bellarmine experience. I know you were one, um, you know, you didn't pitch a, a ton in high school. No. You battled some, some arm stuff, played some right field. I still remember a, an old story about that. Well, I think your sophomore year, you played more right field than you did pitch, which I can't believe, but it, it's true. Um, tell us a little bit about that, your, your high school experience there. Yeah, I mean, I think by the end of it, I probably threw about 20 innings at Bell, maybe less, honestly, because I was hurt. Let's see, junior year, I think I got a soap on my elbow, just clean it out, didn't really work, kind of came back late at the very end in CCS playoff time and um, in the WCAL. Um, we ended up winning the league, which was cool, and then getting torched in CCS, but whatever. Hey, save it. We um, won the league twice, too, all right? Yeah, we had a lot bigger Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but I mean, up until that point, I think freshman, sophomore year of high school, I was a right fielder and I had a few outfield assists. That was pretty fun. I mean, Adam Tassie was the coach that you were talking about. I think he coached with Trotsky, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was with for, for a quick second. Yeah, for, for a little bit. He's a great guy, but he was the guy who stuck me out in right field and I didn't pitch until sophomore year, really. I mean, I was pitching with you guys with Trotsky and stuff and Cali, but um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't until sophomore year. And then after that, I was like a PO from junior, senior year on, um, and just kind of went from there. But unfortunately, I didn't get to pitch a bell too much because of the injury. What was your last at bat as a, with Trotsky? Oh, at that's Pal. a good one. At Pal, it was a walk-off bomb. And no! I don't even know what's turning. It was awesome, though. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, uh, have, no. have you hit a home run since? No, no shot. <laughs> I, I barely make contact now. It's insane. We're lucky if he gets his bunts down. I get hey, my bunts hey, down. Bun, homer, What's that? I have a homer. <laughs> well, I, don't even, I can't hear you, Tom. I'm sorry. Can't hear me? Can't hear me? I can, oh, hear, no, you. I can hear you better. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I said, Powell Stadium's a fun place to hit at. Even I have Oh, yeah. Homer. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I got one on the books, so that's it. That would be yeah. And so, hey, after that, after high school, both of you guys together, uh, moving on to Santa Clara. I know that was for you, Mitch. That was kind of your big, your big hurdle that year. You, you didn't, didn't you redshirt your, your first year there? And then yeah, she, so yeah, go ahead. I got, I got Tommy John that first year because all that, I mean, after all that scope and surgery stuff during high school, it didn't really work out. So just went under the knife and got that taken care of. And then a little bit different for you, Steve, right? You, you plugged right in and, and, and started playing right away. Shoot, I want to say you hit in the middle of the order, at least. Uh, I know you did toward the end of the year if you didn't start start out in the middle. What was that like going from, you know, playing high school baseball to, to stepping foot in the WCC and, and playing right away? Uh, it was definitely scary in the beginning. Um, but 
when Mitch and I were both committing, it was kind of like we followed you guys. I remember you guys talking about your um, like your fallback colleges, your realistic colleges, and then your dream colleges where you'd like to go. Um, for us, we thought Santa Clara would be a great spot for competitively and also being able to compete right away for a spot. I think that was big for both of us. Um, so that fall coming into freshman year, I was I was just ready to go. You know, we worked out all the time. We always preparing together. So I think it, that kind of got the nerves away once I got on the diamond and started rolling. That's something that really mattered to you, right? Was was getting a chance to play every day or getting an opportunity early? Yeah, I mean, for especially for me, I've always wanted to play professional baseball and get to the next level, get to the next level, you know. Um, and you can't do that by sitting on the bench, especially at a lot of these big schools where you just get um, like just get a lot of guys put over you, you know, even if you're a junior, they can bring in junior recruits like Juco guys or something like that. So for playing right away for me was, I just wanted the opportunity to compete for a spot. And then from there, I was good. And then how about you, Mitch? What was uh, some deciding? Well, one, talk about your freshman year and kind of going through that, that adversity. And then, you know, even going into how you made your decision and, and why Santa Clara was good for you. I know we talked about, Gabe Rivas earlier, and Gabe, if you're out there and you wind up seeing this, man, we got to get you on this at some point. Maybe with both of you guys, because what, he's with the Dodgers now, right? He's still oh, Mitch's yeah, he, boss. Yeah, he's the <laughs> pitching coordinator for the Dodgers, so. Okay, so okay, so nothing but good things uh, about Rivas, but uh, tell us a little bit about, about Santa Clara, the experience, your freshman yeah. year, and, and all that. I mean, uh, so coming into it, I, I didn't really want to go to Santa Clara. I, uh, to be honest, I didn't want to be so close to home I wanted to like get out a little bit more like West coast Pac 12 would have been ideal, but it wasn't really in the cards, especially with how much I played or pitched. Um, so I ended up doing it and I was like, all right, I guess I'll go there, which is looking back. It was an amazing decision. I'm really glad I did it, but it was like at the time I was kind of, eh, I want to get away. I want to, because it's 20 minutes away. Yeah. Um, and, and it's also, I think from Bellarmine in my class alone, there's 50 guys that went to Santa Clara. So it was like, it's a total feeder school for Bell uh, for Bellarmine, yeah, and um, just felt too close, but it turned out amazing. I mean, I loved it there. Um, and then freshman year, like right away, I was hit with this Tommy John thing, and I was stuck doing rehab um, for a year, and I was just kind of I basically I just got fat. I mean, I probably came into college and I was like one seventy five, super fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by the by like the peak of my fatness, I was probably like 230. I mean, like I put 235 on 235 because you surpassed me. I did get fatter than him, yeah. You played more than Steve? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's about. So I always call him the horse, dude. Like like his whole life since 13. <laughs> so that's impressive. Yeah, I know. I I had him. I had him for a little bit. Um, but I mean, that was really fun too, because I got to do the college thing kind of like they'd go on road trips and I'd be, I'd be home on the weekends. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We won't go into too much about you know, <laughs> clean it on here. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, of course. I was looking at your, your bio earlier today. I'm not going to lie to a little bit. Not that I need to do much research on you guys. On your bio, Mitch, it says your hobbies are, are fishing and golf. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I was like, I don't, there's no chance. I don't know where fishing came from. Golf, I used to play a little bit in high school, but not really. Golf, I can see golf, but when you told me fishing, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no shot. I, the last time I was fishing was probably in high school, but it's probably I've probably gone out like three or four times ever. I don't. Care. So I was thinking, like, uh, if I had to guess your hobbies, it'd be like lounging by a pool somewhere. It's kind of that I mean, would be like hobby number would be, one for me if I had. To yeah, guess. that'd be up there. I mean, I'd say beach, beach before pool, but yeah, you got the lounging. <laughs> <laughs> or fishing, fishing on a boat. Yeah, and fishing Steve, in the so, ocean. Steve, it has you as a, like the typical high school answer, playing video games and hanging with my friends. That was what you had. Huge. I, I was a beast and still am. That's, that sounds very truthful. That sounds very truthful. That's all I do is play video games and hang out with my friends. So, hey, Tom. Sometimes I, baseball. Tom yeah, and what, I what, uh, what played video, game? video games recently. Tom, why don't you tell, really? tell them about about our video game and what uh, well, well, we ran across. Well, well, oh yeah. So um, I've been playing the show a lot. We've been playing the show a lot. Obviously this quarantine mm -hmm. gave us a lot of time. And so now we can unlock missions and stuff like that. But uh, I was 
got a, scrolling through a new pack that I got, and I did I did find a Mitch White card. I did find really? a nice. Sixty awesome. overall. Sixty overall, baby. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, it's pretty good. And they, they gave you the eighty-one velocity. Eighty-one velocity. All right. And oh, out of a hundred. <laughs> well, nine. I don't know. Yeah, out of a hundred, there's some guys that throw harder than that. But this guy throws a hundred. Yeah, I did see. Yeah. Is that your goal, 100? My best uh, velo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. It's been a while, but. Back in the day, right? Oh. Back in the day uh, last year. So they did you dirty, dude. They did you dirty that. Uh, I don't know about that. I, th one thing I did see, though, is I don't have a curveball in that game, which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we got to let them know. You know what? We'll be the ones. We're going to back you. We'll, we'll send some right. and be, or, uh, or MLB yeah. and tell those guys, like, yeah. So how are you? I just got no. I just got to be a bigger deal or do something. I don't know. Make it. <laughs> make them care. I'm not right. worth their time right now. They also put my speed at like 15, which is so wrong. Are you in there, bro? How do I not have a Berman card? It's it's they're rare, very rare. <laughs> <laughs> it's a diamond. So you got to you got to trade for it. Up. Trade up for it. <laughs> so there I'm is a Berman. Go I got. I'm gonna go searching. So, I mean, hey, you can get all the guys. Right you can now? Aren't huh? you playing the that? show for in, in a in a competition? No, I was playing Fortnite in a like a pro athlete competition, but it oh. like it, the the software messed up and like half of us couldn't play and it, they just kind of banged it. it sucked. Yeah, yeah, I would have won too. We do play Fortnite a little bit too. I know. I can't lie. We can't lie. Add me up. We're in. Yeah. We're in. Yeah. Neither of us is any good. I don't – doesn't matter what Tom says, no good at Fortnite. Mitch plays Fortnite, too. I Does used he? to. I, I deleted it. No, 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 no. I deleted it. I, I had to make room plays. for COD. <laughs> Call of Duty just takes up so much space. It's ridiculous. Ask your mom for a new PS4 for Christmas. <laughs> no, PS5, PS5 is coming out. And uh, by new? Christmas, I think PS5, it'll be out. Nice. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions just listening to you guys kind of talk, and I just kind of had a couple of questions kind of going through. Um, Stevie, we'll start with you, big dog. Um, okay. So, I mean, since you played at Saratoga with Vark coaching you, and you played, what, 13, from 13 all the way to high school with Vark, so, I mean, got to hear your craziest Vark stories, whether you embarrass them or not. It's, <clears throat> it's fun. Um, I know you got a lot of this guy. I've seen a lot of crazy things i can't imagine what the younger vart was doing uh got, i mean me and adam still... it gets crazy i have the mute button if it gets crazy <laughs> we have uh, in um it was my sophomore year of high school so we're playing at los gatos and we're getting crushed i'm not los gatos is they're not better than us but we probably got out coached <laughs> that game whatever so um we're, we're getting crushed like by like 15 runs and there's a ball in the dirt and i didn't block it i get it and Adam's just yelling at me. He's like, Stevie, Stevie. And I'm like, not looking at him. I'm just, we're down 15. Like, what can you tell me? Like, we're not, what? He's Stevie. And I don't listen to him. And he, innings over. And then I'm running back in the dugout. And he's like, Stevie. He stands right in front of the dugout entrance. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this right now. Like, I just can't do this. So I literally, he won't move. So I just run right through him, right through his shoulder. And I go behind him. I slam all my gear like a little like a fifth grader, just terrible attitude. And I start screaming and then he starts screaming at me and just puts me on the bench. And that was probably my best, my best and his best blow up on me too. So that was pretty funny. That happened. That happened. He definitely ran through my chest. <laughs> <laughs> but not strong enough to stop Stevie. I was like, well, I kind of, I have to take him out now, right? This guy basically just ran right through me. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, but I mean, we still talk about that till this day. We do. We do. That, that, that happened. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, Mitch, a little, not, not as, not as um, funny of a question, but um, just more serious here. But um, Bellarmine obviously is a, is a really good school education wise. Um, and Santa below Clara's Saratoga, a little below. Uh, oh, I know Saratoga stuff too. I know Saratoga. Actually, sure, Tommy. one of the top, one of the top public schools, but Bellarmine the, does have a good uh, education system. And yep. how, how did that get you ready for SCU? Oh, I mean, it helped a lot, I think. I, I don't know if this is common for everyone, but for me, it felt like high school was harder than college. 
um, in general because maybe it was the way that Bellerman prepared us. I wouldn't know otherwise, but I, I, I thought I was – I felt pretty comfortable and ready, especially with, like – I mean, I don't know how, like, Santa Clara and Bellarmine are both Jesuit schools, too, which is, like, Catholic. Not that I'm even Catholic or religious, really, but, it, 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 like, that kind of, I don't know, that stream of thinking kind of uh, carried through and helped out a lot. Um, so when I was finally at Santa Clara, it was just like, all right, this is basically the same thing as what I've been doing. Um, right. No, that's and, here. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was an easy transition for me. Um, now, I know you guys were talking about those teams, the, you know, the Della playing, the Molina, the Palominis. The, yeah. um, so right now, NorCal Travel Ball actually is doing something called the Gauntlet. Um, now, in the Gauntlet, they take some of the best teams around and they put them together and they're playing in, like, in this league together. We weren't able to do it because we didn't, we didn't match with our schedule. But um, I think I seen a picture on Bart's desk of you guys uh, kind of doing something very similar to that. You want to, um, but I heard a story about that team was like just getting drugged through the mud all season. I just want to kind of clarify and, and hear a little more about that. Well, yeah, yeah, it was rough. I mean, I, to t tell you the truth, surprise Stevie and the Berman family stuck with us through that. Um, but I think uh, it was called the Elite League at the time, probably about the top, <laughs> I call it the top eight eight or 10 travel ball teams uh, were in it. I think we were 13, if I'm not mistaken. We won, I still remember, we won our first game. We won like 10 nothing. Mercy ruled it. And then we lost like 25 consecutive games after that. And it absolutely <laughs> smoked. Now, on that so team- Mitch wasn't there yet. I don't think I was, because I don't remember. No, no, Mitch no he wasn't. <laughs> Thank God. Turned Thank God. It around, yeah. turned it around. But uh, yeah, I mean, shoot. I think Andrew Mallon was on that team. Sam mm -hmm. was on that team. Uh, man, qu quite a Nikki few. Moe. Nikki, Nikki Moe. Nikki Moe was on that team, absolutely. Um, that was, those were kind of – that was the core for, for us. But, yeah, yeah that group stuck together. Uh, it doesn't really happen a ton now. We see it in our program, uh, uh, you know, more and more. But, um, Matt, tell, tell us about that team a little bit, Steve. Like, you know, going through that, getting your – I still remember getting boat raced, man. Um, but then, shoot, by the end of it in your career with us, we were – we had some we had some good squads yeah I mean it's I mean it's all part of it right you to go up you got to go down at sometimes and you learn from that I mean a lot of that builds the kind of players we are today you think about like Sam Dell playing I was talking to my dad about him like last year he blew up last year and it's like it's like well Sam hasn't really changed he's always been like that bulldog bulldog mentality like give me the ball I want the ball down 20 up 20 it's kind of like he's we've always called him the rubber arm but it's really just he wants to throw and um, I think for him, that that season or like a team like that could really affect his career just because he learned to just compete. And I think we learned how to do that there and not at too mean where he was before. Um, mm. He likes to – Mitch was on that too mean at 12 you. But, uh, you know, it's like you just got – you learn those things over time and you got to get kicked in the teeth sometimes. And we did that at Santa Clara too and pro ball also. And it's good for everyone. Good. Good here. Um, now, one, one last thing, uh, one last question that I have for you guys. Um, both of you guys are in the Dodgers organization. Um, obviously, uh, I seen Mitch at the facility a week or two ago. I uh, don't even know when. All this, this time is going. Uh, social time. distance. Yeah. Social distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no daps. Just came in. Just kind Real of wanted. Quick, in and out. Yeah, just kind of wanted to ask you guys, just kind of more for our players and for, you know, just people watching this. Um, how, do, how do the Dodgers um, want you guys to care for your arms? I've I seen uh, Mitch grab some of the, uh, our driveline stuff and kind of and started working on that. I, I know catching, you know, keeping your arm strong and, uh, you know, what's going on is, uh, really matters. Um, what do you guys do? Um, what, what, what kind of stuff do you guys do over there? Well, I mean, on the pitcher side, at least, um, they've always been cool about it. It's very much like hands off. It's like it's your career at the end of the day, especially in pro ball. That's how they treat it. Um, yeah. But for me, like, say, say I'm in a five day rotation for starting. I'll throw a pen day two. So, sorry, let's roll back a little bit. Day five is the day I pitch. Day one is like a lift day, lower body stuff, um, kind of recovery. Um, and then day two is my bullpen day. And that's when I also do arm care. So that's like 
uh, whether it's weights or manuals with a, with our um, PT that's always with the team or like a tubing exercise, like Jaeger bands kind of thing. So I'll do that post throw post bullpen. Um, and then day three, I also have an upper body lift that day. And then day three is, um, kind of like a body weight circuit type thing just to keep the body moving more recovery focused. Day four is a really light throw day. And then day five, I pitch again. So that's kind of the rotation. And then recently we've added on a lot of driveline stuff. So plyo balls, weighted balls, um, the Jaeger bands are huge. Um, a lot of like kettlebell stuff for stability. Um, and that's been great. I actually just recently started that in the uh, spring training. So that was just stuff I came to grab and actually it was huge that you awesome. guys let me borrow that because <laughs> I've been using that a lot. So it's like, I mean, it, I don't know how familiar everyone would be with weighted balls, but that stuff has helped not only with, keep my arm in good shape and strengthening it, but also like mechanically just getting my arm in the right spots where it needs to be and, and ready to fire. Um, so I use that every day pretty much, especially right now when there's not that much I can do. That's a huge part of my uh, routine and daily feel. What about you, Steve? What do you, what do, you do for your arm, that cannon? Uh, uh, I got to get it to a cannon first, but I think for catchers, especially we have, I know, say it's a seven, say you have two series in a week, you have to do one arm care, we call it arm care. So basically, like Mitch was saying, a mobility or like a stability stuff. So like holding a ball and like people pressing your arm and keeping your shoulder in a good place, elbow in a good place. A lot of band stuff, like Mitch said, um, pitchers obviously have a lot more time to do that kind of stuff. But I think a catcher or any infielder, outfielder, is it's very important to try to get it into. So I know too. Uh, well, we're gonna finish these uh, these talks with we got a, a Coach Tommy's South Bay six pack of questions. So yeah, uh, yeah. I hope you guys are prepared. No holds barred. If you can tell there's stories about Coach Bart, Coach Tommy can find some embarrassing stuff on you guys. So Tom, mm -hmm. start firing at them. Yeah, they'll be easy and simple, uh, and very light. Um, so. I First question is, what are you guys' pregame meal? We'll go Steve, you go first right now, and then Mitch. Um, uh, favorite one. I always – well, we get – for in our organization, they actually feed us really well, so we'll get pregame stuff. But a lot of my pregame meal is avocado toast. And I catch a lot of heat from that from, like, guys from Texas or Georgia, wow. Florida. They're not big on the avocado toast. I think it hasn't transitioned over there. They're not very tech-savvy <laughs> or those kind of things. So, they'll catch on, though. Yeah. Awesome. That's funny. That's actually what I do a lot is the avocado hey. toast. Thanks, Rumi. Those California boys. Yeah. I mean. I guess so. Uh, mine uh, too. I mean, do you ever do honey? It's really good. No, with the avocado? Pretty weird. Yeah. It's serious. Oh, it's good. A little salt. Over a little it. Honey. Over it. it makes me so throw, it it makes like, me throw 100. I might try it. Yeah, right. I like pineapple on his pizza, so. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. that, but oh. see, so see? Well, hey, honey, I'm oh, right. I don't, that's question. That's question, boys. Mitch, you're up first. I don't do the it. Try it. Three, the last three songs that you played on your phone. Uh, uh, let me look it up. I don't know. I was listening to music this morning a lot. Um, we worked out together yesterday, and Big Booty Remix was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's a, a workout. That's playlist. a combo of like a an hour long combo of songs big booty remix 17 <laughs> it's actually awesome if you guys want to check that out i don't even know how to look at recently played um but i mean this morning i was listening to some beatles and Be then i yeah like when i woke up kind of relaxed so. give me give me another give me two more artists then two more artists oh two more artists okay um uh, another was the alabama shakes um, okay. And then another was, let's see. Uh, You're putting us to sleep over here. It. It, it's another artist called K-L-L-O. I guess Klo. I don't know. But, yeah. What kind of music is that? <laughs> what kind of music? Uh, it's like EDM. Okay, okay, okay. EDM. Yeah. All right. I I see a lot of wide range. The Beatles to EDM. Yeah. Yeah. All <laughs> over the place. I like it. I'm sure Steve oh, yeah. is going to be my, okay, so mine was Big Booty Remix, Volume 17. Pretty wow. nasty. Uh, Stuck in a Dream, featuring Gunna and G-Walk with Chris Brown. Okay, okay. 
I see you guys. That's two. Big Where's the third? <laughs> Big Booty six, Remix. That's six, one. Six, and then Stuck in a Dream and G Walker, two different oh, things. Oh, I thought you said you did this. Never mind. Okay. We said uh, songs and you gave artists, so you can cool it, well, buddy. I didn't know exactly the songs. I didn't, I, Spotify doesn't have like a. Last edit, edit, three edit, edit. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, now, the next one. Stevie, you're up first this one. The weirdest superstition you've seen or done, um, oh, either college, pro, high school? Um, I mean, there's some pretty weird ones I can't necessarily say. I personally smell my socks every time I put them on, left foot, then right foot. <laughs> That's weird. Wow. That, that I, do is same, I do the same for my cleats. Like, I go, I smell my socks, and I put them on, and then I put my left foot, then right foot cleat on. Tell me you don't smell your cleats, dude. I mean, it, oh. it depends if I got a hit the day before. <laughs> People pay for hits, baby. <laughs> All right, Mitch. Mitch probably does I'm some sure. weird stuff. I don't, I don't have any superstitions, no. I mean, I've seen a lot. I've seen some, I've seen some weird stuff. Yeah, there's some weird um, guys out there. Yeah. One of the guys. Grip, let it fly. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not like that. It, I mean, one of the guys last year in our clubhouse, he used to do this thing where every time he would leave his chair, he'd get up and he'd like he'd rearrange it. So he'd get up and he'd have to go like, I don't know if you can hear the banging, but it's like, he bang he, sha he shakes it and like here. make sure it's in the right place in the locker. Yeah, but he's got to do it at least three or four times until it's perfectly right. And if he move it, he knows and he'll he'll freak out, he'll flip out. Wow. Is he but a pitcher? He, no, he's a he's a hitter. Oh, he's a tank though. So if you mess with him, he like punches you. Okay, leave that guy alone. Yeah. yeah, he's got four uh, OCD. Okay, so we're going back to music again. We're back to music. Uh, Mitch first. Your so uh, your walkout song. Um, back in college, my favorite walkout was it was called Back in the Day. It was um, more you sing it real quick. Awesome. No, yeah, I, no, I can't sing it. No, no, no. no. by the Hoffner. Okay, okay, Stevie, what you got? I had a uh, halftime by Ying Yang Twins. It's from NBA 2K. Absolute banger. Um, and that also walkthrough. Yeah, it was either that or walkthrough. But I didn't hit too well with walkthrough, so I changed it to Panda, and then I didn't hit well with Panda. And I Panda was it terrible. Oh, it was like below 100 with Panda. And it's a good <laughs> song. It's just oh. not meant for baseball. So if you were going to have a song this, uh, this season, what, what was it going to be? Were you going back to it? Or you... No, you can never repeat just because you never know who heard you before. Like, there's a person that stands like, you played that in college, and you're like, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's the biggest struggle. One of the biggest concerns every year is I need to find a new walkout song. So, I actually didn't find one. But, luckily, we're on a hiatus. So, so do they let you change it mid-season? I mean, how many changes you can, do you get? You can change you it mid-season. Yeah, yeah, no. Not yeah. exactly, but. <laughs> well, Perfect. All right, so last question, last question. I feel like I know Mitch is just by listening to what we talked about earlier. But, uh, so, Mitch, will let you go first. If you weren't a pitcher, what position would you play? If I wasn't a pitcher, oh, I'd be a, probably center field. I think that'd be sick. Just run around and <laughs> – oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, right field was cool, but center field, that's where – We hid you in right field, Mitchell. That's where the big dogs <laughs> run. <laughs> now, Stevie, I, I, I mean, I know you played a bunch of – I know you played shortstop. I know you played catcher. I know you pitched a little bit. Hold on. Can mm -hmm. I just, yes, can I, I did, Tommy. In Georgia? Tommy. Yes, I did. The last oh. one to you know, pick is picture. I had to force this boy to get on the bump. I had to. So it ain't picture. Don't bring up Georgia. Oh, I thought you were going about that story when he was shortstop in Atlanta. At I wasn't going to do that to him. I wasn't going to do oh. that. We were yeah. the 10 seed. 10 seed out of like 300 stopped. teams. Three errors in one inning. <laughs> was I it the cried. first? Tears. Tears. I <laughs> cried. <laughs> No, it was the last day. We needed to do that to, like, advance to the semis or whatever. And I – oh, three errors. Then you put me at third. You moved me from short to third just to keep the ball away from me, and I made another <laughs> error. <laughs> well, we had a lot of DHs on that team at the time. <laughs> I would have DH if I could, but – But Mallon yeah, had but... to play somewhere, so <laughs> – 
<laughs> and we had to hide Nicky Mo, but yeah, that's whatever. Right. Um, uh, if I had to, do, if I had to do it all over, I would do a pitcher just because I've seen what these guys do, and it's like they throw and they're done. It's like that's it. Uh, they no, have parts, hours, parts, hours yeah. on hours who have nothing to do. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm blown blown away. You got blown away. I'm not going to lie. You never taught me how to throw a curveball, so I was throwing BP oh, no, fastballs up there. I could figure it out. I just <laughs> – there's a difference. How well, hey, you your curveball? Your curveball all right? Who, mine? Right? Mitch, yeah. Right. Mitch, you have a pretty decent curveball? My curveball is good, yeah. Yeah, see, Steve, I don't know. He went to he went to private school, Bellarmine. I'm trying to think. Did uh did Sam have a pretty good curveball? Uh, it's a slider. Oh, he calls okay. it a slider now. <laughs> okay, cool. But Stevie, didn't you pitch? I think Sam pitch? throws my curveball. Didn't you I don't pitch know what. Grip? Yes, I did pitch in pro ball, and I have a strikeout off of a live pro hitter on a knuckleball. Oh, two. How many innings are are, are just a third? No, I've pitched like five, maybe. Cool. One year, I get, one year I got I was in the zone too much. I had like a twenty-seven ERA. Um, <laughs> lot, two years ago, though, I had a zero ERA. What are you talking about? Like two innings. So my first year, I tried to throw hard just to like, because everyone's like, "Oh, let's see how hard you could throw." I hit eighty-eight, <laughs> which killed my arm for like a week. And then my second, and then this last year, I was like, "All right, I'm not gonna get hurt." So I was throwing balls, and they wouldn't register on the radar gun, but one day it was like 55. They were just like, Beep. That's awesome. Yeah. I got a punchy though. I do have a punchy. That matters. That's all one more matters. Than How bad was that guy getting roasted on his way back to the dugout? I was talking, so I, I mean, as pro guys, you know, like the hitters, just cause I'm catching all the time and I can see them and talk to them. So I was pitching and these guys are taking pitches and I'm like talking to them while they're here. I'm like, what do you want? Like, what are you looking for? I don't want to pitch. I don't want to be here right now. Just hit the ball. They're taking it. And then this guy strikes out, and we're all just, like, yelling at him. Like, what are you doing? It was pretty funny. That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Well, hey, guys, I think, I think we've taken up plenty of your time. Really appreciate you boys uh, spending, spending the time with us and, and uh, you know, getting some information, kicking it off, right? This is our first one, of hopefully, of many. Um, I think we got teleplane coming on. Uh, on our next one, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe he's got some dirt on these guys, Tom. We'll have to ask some questions. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, boys. We'll hey, we'll Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us, guys. All right. All right, guys. See you guys. Beautiful. See you guys. Thanks. Take care. Peace, love.